Okay, thank you all for joining us today. This is our second um, quarterly investor call. We hold one of these every quarter on a different topic. Um, if you last topic was on how we select our grantees, and uh, that's available on our website if you want to look at that again. But today we're going to go over the impact report. I think many of you have received uh, a hard copy of that report, but it's also available online um, on our website. But this is our annual report, and um, it's 2018 to 2019 because uh, our um, fiscal year is January 1 through December 31st. However, our grant making year is a March 31st. I'm sorry, is April 1st to March 31st to coincide with the Indian um, academic year. So um, what we'd like to do today is just go, um, I'm going to walk you through some of the major milestones of the last year, um, including some of uh, the program accomplishments overall, um, some of our new partnerships that we developed. Um, I'll give you a high level reading of the financials, but be happy to answer questions if you have any, and then talk a little bit about what we have on deck for this year. Um, it always feels a little funny that we're talking about last year in July, but um, due to accounting practices uh, and needing to get our outside audit, it often is the case that that's not complete until uh, the end of the, uh, uh, close to the end of the second quarter. So, um, in terms of our program milestones, for the last year, for the grant year. Um, the first thing to know is we were um, working in six major cities, and uh, these are the cities that we were in. In Mumbai, we are working with Vacha, which works, provides an after school program for at risk young women, uh, in particular, young women who have been marginalized due to caste or uh, because of religious reasons. And we provide after school training for them for ages 10 to 18 in two communities. And then also they provide leadership development to help women, these young women learn about their rights and then take action in their community on those rights. In Delhi, we were supporting Stop India, which is a uh, program for survivors of trafficking. And in the past year, we were helping them work with survivors to uh, help these young women um, mainstream and begin to uh, be able to leave the safe house that they have but actually live on their own independently and get jobs and go back to school. In Calcutta, we worked with two organizations. That is our founder's home city, and so that's why we have a couple of sites there. One was a computer training program called Udami, and they provide after-school training on computers um, and help, uh, we support them for job placement and also English training for those students. And then the Jabala Action Resource Center, which works with the daughters of sex workers in one of the largest red light districts in all of Calcutta. And we provide a safe haven for these young women between the ages of 10 and 18. So they have some place to go when their mothers are working um, that's safe. And while they're there, they are able to get after school tutoring, to stay in school and complete their studies, and they also are learning about their rights and in the past year have taken action on those rights uh, to make their communities more safe. In Bangalore, or Bengaluru as it is known now, uh, we support an, uh, what really is an orphanage. It's a home for uh, young women who've been abandoned by their parents or for whom their parents can no longer take care of them. Um, and this is, again, a community of girls between, the ten, between 10 and 18. And what Shataka's support is helping them, uh, actually the girls that are getting ready to age out, similar to foster care, we help them get ready for living independently, um, which they are, uh, by law in India, after age 18, they have to live on their own. Um, and we help them get ready for that. And then in the first year that they're living on their own, we provide support for them where they're living in a paying, what's called a paying guest hostel, similar to a dormitory with supervision. Um, and then finally in Pune, we support a project called the Equal Community Foundation. And that is working with uh, boys between the age of 10 to 18 to help them learn about uh, gender equality and kind of challenge some of the um, issues of patriarchy that they themselves are subjected to and maybe become, as I say, a little bit more like feminists. 
So our programs in the last, in 2018, were the ones that you see here. So the first is the Supports for Success program, which works with young women between the ages of 10 to 18 to really make sure that they are able to stay in school and complete their high school education. Um, oftentimes when girls hit puberty in India, that's the first proof point of when they are um, sometimes forced out of school and into marriage. So our program helps them stay in school and um, helps them also during that time learn about their rights and begin to learn how they can stand up for their rights. Our second program last year was the Arshataka Scholars Program, and that is a college or vocational scholarship up to, to $2,000 a year. Um, young women apply competitively. They're nominated by the sites we support, and, uh, and if they're selected, they are able to go to college. Um, we cover everything from transportation to new clothes to, of course, tuition and books and lodging. Um, and as well, the scholars are required to do a community project to advance girls' rights. The next program we had in the past year was our Ready for Work program. So that was helping to train young women to get jobs in the formal economy. Um, less than 27% of women in India work in the formal economy. And, uh, and, and that is actually a statistic that's gone down in the time that I've been working with Shataka. So we really work hard to make sure that the young women we work with are prepared and are able to find jobs in the formal economy. The next program we had was a Strong Organizations for Strong Girls, and that is a capacity building program for the grantee sites we work with specifically. So we had an annual summit um, that this program that the grantees went to to learn new skills. And that happened in November of 2018. And then finally, the Boys for Girls program, as I mentioned, which was at one site in um, Pune, where we are teaching boys about girls' rights and gender equality issues. So as we look over the last several years, you can see that in 2013, we were significantly smaller. And in the past year, um, we gave away almost $200,000 in grants. Um, that is of an impressive 400, over 400% 400 increase in our grants awarded over the last several years. And it's something we keep striving towards. So it's uh, more, more sites, um, more programs, more girls. And that's meant an increase in the number we've served. So we've gone to almost 2,000 young women last year that we supported. Whereas uh, in 2014, the first year we were really tracking the numbers, we were serving just 300. And our goal is to continue to grow. So it's an exponential growth. Other statistics in the last year that we're very proud of is that in India, about a third of young women are forced out of school um, and, and before the age of 18 and, have to, and, and are forced into marriage. Um, our goal at Shataka was to keep that to less than 5% of our young women. And I'm proud to report that only 2% of all the women we served last year um, had to leave one of our programs um, as a result of being forced into marriage. We're also quite proud of the fact that 100% of our young women graduated last year. Um, that is more than double what is the average in India, and that is a real testament to the work of our Supports for Success program and the grantee partners that we have that really, really work with the young women we have in the, that are getting ready to graduate to make sure that they're passing their courses, their parents are working with them to keep them strong and, in, and enrolled in school. And then finally, 64% of our graduates last year have been placed into jobs in the formal economy. Um, and actually another 2%, two of those scholars uh, aren't in school because they're going to, they're pursuing their advanced degrees. So it's even a little bit better. But again, as I mentioned, in a country where less than a third of women are working in the formal economy, the fact that our young women at our, are getting jobs at, in, at a much higher rate is something we're really, really, really proud of. Other indicators from the last year you can see on this slide. We had 100% of our college graduates um, that for the class of 2018 graduated. We didn't lose one in the, over the course of the three years of their schooling. We had almost a 90% that passed their English courses 
and as well as computers. Um, almost 90% reported an increase of, of knowledge of their rights. We had 90% that were registered to vote, and that was very important because India just had an election. Um, we're working on really trying to have the young women we work with get bank accounts. Um, right now, we're, we're at about 45%. But the, which is a little bit better than the Indian average, but we'd really like to make sure that all the young women we work with learn the value of money and learn the value of managing their money. And then finally, almost 100, like 90% of the boys we work with reported that they had really changed their attitudes in terms of gender equity. Other major, one of the major accomplishments of, of 2018 was that we graduated our very first class of college scholarships students. Um, we had 11 students from across India that graduated, and it was just really an amazing journey for all of them. So we, in looking back to what happened to them over the past year, as I, as I mentioned, seven have found jobs in the formal economy. Um, three are working in accounting, one's a nurse, one's a teacher, another is a pharmacist, and one is working in high tech. The most exciting piece of all of this is that on average, these young women are, use, are earning $1,620 a year, which may sound like a little, but compared to the average in India, which is just $600.16, we've almost tripled what, what, our, what is, our girls are, are earning almost to triple that. So that's really, really exciting. That's a game changer, not only for these young women, but also for their families. And even more than that, I think it shows I, the community sees what has happened because these families have invested in their in their daughters and that begins to change the economic value of a girl, which is really at the core of Shadika's mission. As I mentioned, two are pursuing their masters and there are two that are still looking for work and are temping along the way. Now, one of the scholars from last year did report that she got married upon graduation um, and that was a kind of a pressure that she felt from her parents. But the thing that's exciting is that she still is working as a nurse. And again, that's a rarity in India, even among my, my husband's family, that often when women get married, they no longer are allowed to, to work for a living. So over time, we've been growing this scholarship program. So we started the program in 2015 with just 10 scholars. And last year, we had 41. And our goal is to continue to grow this program year over year. In addition to the program accomplishments, we also had some new partnerships that we were able to form um, with new donors throughout the United States. One that we're very proud of is actually an international fund that we um, were one of seven out of a, a, a class of, I think, a group of over 200, 200 nonprofits across the world who competed to become part of this fund, and Shadika was selected for that. And that's the Global Giving Girl Fund. And that is providing us unrestricted resources every month throughout the entire year of 2019. In addition, we formed a, a corporate partnership with, the, with Equinix, which is a high tech company in the Silicon Valley, and their women's leadership network. And through them, they're supporting our English tutoring program for our college students and for the young women who are getting ready to go to college. And in exchange for that, um, they have a pen pal program. So every other month, they write a letter on a topic and the young women write back. And what we're finding is with that program, young women are not only learning to improving their reading and writing of English, but they're also learning valuable computer skills because they're having to learn how to type on a computer to send their letters. We continue to expand our donor circle to support our scholarships. I think we now have about 25 donors from across the United States that are part of that fund. And the, those donors make a three-year commitment of a minimum of $1,200 a year to participate in the fund. That's the average amount of a scholarship for the young women we support. And as part of that, they not only become a pen pal with one of our scholarship students, but they also have the opportunity to review the applications annually and make the selection of each year's um, group of graduate of scholarship students. And then finally, we joined uh, the Obama Foundation's Girl Opportunity Alliance. And that's a networking opportunity for us to share best practices with other nonprofits working throughout the world on girls' rights issues. Our financials. 
So this is the third year that we have had an independent audit, and this is where we landed in terms of our financials. Um, you know, as you can see, we raise more money than um, we're still running in the positive. I think the thing that I would want to draw your attention to is that 82% of the of the program of the revenues that we expended last year went directly to support our programs. So we're managing um, our overhead as well as we can. Um, we did not have a lot of uh, revenue in terms of special events because we didn't hold any in-person events in 2018. We um, everything we did was pretty much online and through one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, other than that, we continue to receive contributions at a pretty consistent pace over the previous year, and we are in a pretty good cash position by year end. Pledges reflect those donations where don't, where uh, donors have made multi-year commitments, either of unrestricted funds to support our operations or for things like the scholarship fund where they're supporting a specific um, program. And you can see our revenues have increased steadily since 2013. Uh, we've grown actually quite a bit, almost a little over 300%. We were flat last year, but part of that was because um, in, 20, in the year before, in uh, 2017, that was our 25th anniversary year. So we held a series of galas throughout the United States and had kind of, as you can see, quite a jump in revenues from the year before 2016. So we were able to keep that consistent, which is pretty impressive. And um, our, But our goal is to continue to grow our revenues over time. Other things to look at in terms of our expenditures is consistently, we track our you know, management, fundraising, and programs over time. And you'll see we're really trying to control our costs. Um, as we've grown, we have added staff, so we've begun to see that increase. We now have staff in India as well as staff here in Denver, um, whereas in 2013 it was just me sitting in my home. So that's quite a bit of growth. Um, our fundraising expenses went down quite a bit, again, because of the gala um, events in 2017. But I think the most important thing is that we really are consistently over time maintaining at least 80% of all of our revenues going to our programs, which is a pretty strong, um, pretty strong balance sheet. Um, and that really reinforces our desire that, you know, the money we raise here is going to our girls. We've obtained several different recognitions of excellence from outside organizations, including GuideStar, where we have Platinum, which is the highest rating you can get. Um, our Better Business Bureau um, has renewed our good standing. Our audits of the last three years have been in good standing. And then Great Nonprofits has also rated us highly. And that is uh, particularly um, in, important for us because we get that nomination based on the recommendations of our donors and of our grantee partners themselves. So as we look forward into this year, there's a few things that I wanted to highlight. Um, as part of our new strategic plan that will be released in 2020, our lofty goal is by 2030 to be serving over 10,000 young women, young women and to be working in every state in India. So this year we began um, a process towards that by adding three new sites in three new states, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and um, Uttar Pradesh. We also, this year, this year are uh, doubled the number of students that are receiving, or as we're looking forward into 2023, our goal is to double the number of students receiving scholarships. So I said we were at 40 this year, in 2018, our goal is to get to 80 by 2022. Um, our goal by 2022 in terms of, of states is to be in about, ha about 15 of the 30 states by that time. One thing we did this past May for the first time is we brought all the young women who are receiving scholarships together in one place for a four-day summit we call the Leaders for Change Summit. And at that summit, so it was over 40 young women who came. Every single one of them, it was the first time they'd ever taken a, a plane ride. For many, it was the first time they'd ever left home without their parents. At the summit, they learned the skills they needed to carry out their community action projects. Um, those are on an array of issues from, you know, trying to educate 
girls about child marriage and help them avoid child marriage to help um, re-enroll girls in education and teach them the right the, about their right to education, um, to issues of safety and mobility, or issues of sanitation, or even issues of voter, voting rights. We just got a report this morning that one young woman, what young woman who just started her project, has already successfully re-enrolled a student in school. So we're really excited about that program, um, and very excited to see what the coming year leads to. Our other goal looking forward is to develop an internship and job readiness program. One of the things we heard from our graduates is that they need more assistance um, finding jobs in the formal economy. So we've just completed a study of what the challenges are that they face um, and what we might be able to do. And one of the early recommendations is that we provide, that Shadika looks at providing internships, either for Shadika itself or partnering with some um, cor American corporates that have businesses in India to be able to provide short-term inter internships. We piloted this program already this year with a social media internship that we call Making Her Story. And we have now two young women who are serving as social media fellows. Um, one is in Mumbai and one is in Bangalore. And they every week provide content for our social media um, for Facebook and Instagram. So it's a picture, a story about their life, a blog, a short video, and they gain great skills and also get to really practice and improve on their English. We also had an intern in Mumbai who helped us with the data collection for our jobs research. She actually interviewed um, over 45 young women about um, in our programs about the challenges they were having getting jobs. So that, that program has been very successful and we're interested in expanding it. And also next year, our plan is in 2020 at our Leaders for Change Summit to have a specific uh, day session with our second year college students to talk to them about career planning and getting them ready for thinking about job placement. And then finally, uh, we are just about to launch a um, sorry, a um, multi-year initiative working in one specific place, going very deep um, with not just boys, but also men, as well as community leaders such as elected leaders, um, leaders at hospitals, religious leaders, uh, to really address issues of gender-based violence. So that is called the DAWN Initiative for Gender-Based Violence. And that is getting going to be kicked off, we believe, in August of this year, having just approved the grant. So we're really excited about the, the new opportunities as well as continuing to work with the communities we have been serving. So that is it. Um, if you have any other questions, um, you are on mute. You can take yourself on mute. I'm happy to ask them now. But um, so let me know. Other than that, I really appreciate you joining us for this call. And thank you for, for your continued support of Shadika.